The Legend of Zelda is one of the most famous video game franchises in history, with over 20 games spanning 40 years. I'm Emma Fife, and today we're going to list 100 facts you didn't know about The Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda was created by designers Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka. Shigeru Miyamoto is also the creator of Star Fox, Donkey Kong, and Mario. Over the course of the franchise, there have been 20 Legend of Zelda games, a number of spin-offs, an animated TV show, and even a manga adaptation. Legend of Zelda was deeply influenced by the game Adventure, which was released on Atari 2600. Miyamoto and Tezuka have said they basically set out to make their own version of the game, which then evolved into Zelda. Zelda was originally developed to be on the Famicom Disk System, however, it would be wildly successful on the Super Nintendo. The original game, Legend of Zelda, was released February 21, 1986. The game's high-concept exploration and puzzle-solving was based on Miyamoto's childhood, where he spent his days exploring the countryside of Sanobe, Japan. In fact, the dungeons in the game are based off the sliding doors in Miyamoto's childhood home. The protagonist of the Legend of Zelda games is named Link. Legend of Zelda is the only Nintendo franchise named after a supporting character and not the protagonist. Originally, the game was going to span many time periods and you would be able to travel through them with the Triforce, thus making Link the link between the past and the future. The game follows Link as he attempts to save the mythical kingdom of Hyrule from an evil tyrant named Ganondorf Dragmire or Ganon in his beast form. Almost all of them have some version of Link saving a princess named Zelda. Princess Zelda is named after the wife of famed author F. Scott Fitzgerald. Link is usually depicted in most of the games as left-handed. Shigeru Miyamoto has said in many interviews that Link's iconic green tunic and boyish physique were inspired by Peter Pan. Legend of Zelda was released in Japan as the Hyrule Fantasy, which makes a heck of a lot more sense when you think about the fact that Zelda literally isn't even in some of the games like Majora's Mask or Breath of the Wild. Legend of Zelda was the first game to actually allow saving due to the innovation of having a battery and RAM built into the cartridge. Before the release of Legend of Zelda in the States, the Nintendo brass was concerned that the game would be a massive failure due to the fact that it required the player to really pay attention and read lots of scrolling text. Needless to say, this did not impact the game's success. Due to the fact that the video game industry was very small in Japan, companies would talent poach creatives if a game performed well. All of the creatives on Zelda worked under pseudonyms. Miyamoto is credited as S. Miyahan, Tezuka as Tenten, Kondo as Konchan, and programmer Aimarui as Marumaru. Legend of Zelda was a massive seller, moving 6.5 million copies. The next game in the Zelda franchise was Zelda II The Adventure of Link. It was released January 14, 1987. The game incorporated elements of side-scrollers and RPGs, which was a significant departure from the previous game. For much of the franchise's history, Adventure of Link was the only real sequel to the initial game. Most of the other games take place as prequels or alternate realities. The game would introduce elements like the Magic Meter and Dark Link to the franchise. The next installment in the franchise was Zelda A Link to the Past. The game was released on November 21, 1991, and was produced by Miyamoto and directed by Tezuka. Link to the Past opted to discard the side-scrolling angle and went back to the expansive gameplay of the first. Link to the Past also introduced many mainstays of the franchise like Parallel Worlds and the Master Sword. The Master Sword was inspired by many European myths and tales, chief among them Excalibur, King Arthur's weapon of choice. Link to the Past was a massive success, selling over 4 million copies. A manga adaptation of Link to the Past was created by Shotaro Inishomori, creator of Kamen Rider and Cyborg 009, and originally published in Nintendo Power Magazine. This adaptation is often looked at as one of the best video game comic book adaptations of all time. It's it's been reprinted many times and was published in the US by Viz Media. Around the same time, an animated adaptation of Legend of Zelda was produced by Deke Media. The show was created by Bob Forward, who worked on such projects as the He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special, Brave Star, G.I. Joe, Biker Mice from Mars, and the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog animated TV show. The show follows Link and Princess Zelda as they defend the Kingdom of Hyrule from the evil wizard Ganon, who is attempting to possess the Triforce. The series lasted 13 episodes. Each of these episodes were aired in tandem with the Super Mario Bros. Super Show in a half-hour block. However, ratings were not good enough to continue either of them. The complete Legend of Zelda animated TV series was released on October 18, 2005 by Shout Factory with bonus features and interactive DVD games. The next game released in the franchise was the Game Boy game, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This is the first game to not take place in the Kingdom of Hyrule and not feature the titular Princess Zelda. The game actually started as a side project for designer Kazuaki Morita. He was messing around with the Game Boy development kit in his free time. When the game was released, it was promoted with a publicity train tour called the Zelda Whistle Stop Tour, where players would attempt to beat Link's Awakening while riding a three-day train across the U.S. The next Legend of Zelda game was released in November of 1998. It was titled The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. 
The game was originally planned to be one of the flagship releases for the N64DD, an expansion of the disk drive on the N64. However, the DD failed and was never widely released. The game came out to wide acclaim and is generally considered one of the best video games of all time. In an early version of the game, there would have been a first-person mode. Obviously, this didn't make it into the finished build. In its first week of release, the game sold over a million copies. Ocarina of Time earned over $150 million in 1998. That makes it more successful than most Hollywood blockbusters released that year. Young Link in Ocarina of Time was actually voiced by a woman. When he screams, Hi-ya! It's actually voice actress Fujiko Takamoto. Two years later, in 2000, Ocarina had a direct sequel in Majora's Mask. Nintendo was very aware that the long wait between Link's Awakening and Ocarina of Time had hurt the fan base and made the release of Ocarina of Time riskier. They wanted to release Majora's Mask within two years. In order to make this deadline, they reused many characters and models. Ocarina of Time sold over 7 million units over the course of its life, which made the expectations surrounding Majora's Mask even higher. Shigeru Miyamoto and Yoshiaki Koizumi came up with the underlying story and the script for the game was written by Mitsuhiro Takano. Before the release of the game, it leaked that it had a working title of Uda Zelda. In Japanese, Uda means hidden or behind. In 1999, Nintendo announced that there would be a playable demo for Nintendo Space World's exhibitions of a new game called Zelda Gaiden. Multiple Zelda games have since had both of these as working titles. Ultimately, it was revealed that Majora's Mask takes place in an alternate reality that follows the same chronology as Ocarina of Time. Majora's Mask sold very well upon its release, moving approximately 314,000 copies. It also had sterling reviews, ranking right up there with Ocarina of Time. Majora's Mask was featured on the GameCube release, Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition Special Promotional Disc that was released in 2003. The next major Legend of Zelda release is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, which was released in 2002 on the GameCube. While the game retains the third-person camera angle and many of the gameplay aspects of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, Wind Waker was something of a departure for the series, as it featured a cartoon-like, cel-shaded, animated, film-esque art style. The game was directed by Eiji Aonuma, who's reprising his director role from Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask was produced by Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka. The Wind Waker was critically well-received and won many Game of the Year awards. However, the deviation in tone and art style proved to be divisive amongst fans. Despite its initial rocky reception, the game has gone on to be highly acclaimed and spawned its own mini-franchise of Toon Link sequels. Those include Phantom Hourglass, which was released in 2007, Spirit Tracks in 2009, and an HD remaster of Wind Waker for the Wii U in 2013. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess was developed for the Wii and GameCube consoles simultaneously. The game focuses on Link attempting to save Hyrule from being enveloped by a corrupt parallel dimension known as the Twilight Realm. Continuity-wise, the game takes place hundreds of years after Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and in an alternate timeline from The Wind Waker. Twilight Princess originally started life as a direct sequel to Wind Waker. However, the director wanted to make a more realistic-looking Link game in order to appeal to the North American market. Shigeru Miyamoto was open to the idea but requested that he come up with a new angle on things so as not to repeat themselves. He suggested revisiting the idea of horseback combat that had been attempted and abandoned during Ocarina of Time. Twilight Princess was the first game to receive a teen rating in the Legend of Zelda series. The next major release in the series was Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which was released for the Wii in November 2011. The art from the game was influenced by the work of Impressionist painters, including those of Paul Cezanne. The implementation of the Wii Motion Plus proved difficult for the game developers. It was almost discarded from the finished game. However, a few last-minute saves meant that it made it to market. Skyward Sword started its development due to the fact that most of the creatives involved felt they had not fully mined the idea of creating a vast world that the player could explore. In 2003, Link appeared as a bonus downloadable character in Namco's Soul Calibur 2. The next game released in the franchise was A Link Between Worlds. This game would be a direct sequel to A Link to the Past. It was released November 22, 2013. The next major release of the franchise was Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which was announced in 2014 and released on March 3rd, 2017. It features the distinction of being the first truly open-world title in the series. Nintendo EPD, an internal development division at Nintendo, was responsible for bringing Breath of the Wild to the Switch and the Wii U. The goal going into the project was to rethink Zelda. When creating the game, the Nintendo EPD division talked at length about the Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, and how they could bring elements from the game to improve the Zelda formula. Breath of the Wild was actually playtested in 8-bit, 
correct. Yes, that's right. They literally made an 8-bit version of the game in order to make sure it was the best it could be. Breath of the Wild is the first main Zelda game to use voice acting in its narrative sequences and cutscenes. However, Link does not appear in these sequences, as he is a silent protagonist in all the games. In 2006, Link and Samus Aran from Metroid were supposed to be bonus characters in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Link's canonical full name, as established by Miyamoto during Breath of the Wild development, is Link, Link. It won numerous awards on release and sold over 19 million copies, making it one of the best-selling video games of all time. Over the course of its lifespan, The Legend of Zelda franchise has generated over $3 billion in revenue. A currently untitled sequel to Breath of the Wild is in the works from Nintendo. They released a trailer for the game during E3 2019. It appears to be another open-world-styled game with a darker tone. It will be released for the Switch and appears to have a release date of either 2021 or 2022. However, judging from past Zelda releases, this game will likely get delayed and not be released on time. Almost every Zelda game has had an extended development cycle. In the 82-second trailer for the game, we see some classic Zelda-style adventuring, cool dungeons, and lots of magic. Normally, we wouldn't see finished animation this early in the game's development. However, since the new sequel will be working off the Breath of the Wild engine, it's not unthinkable. In 2015, a yellow prototype cartridge for the original Legend of Zelda game was sold on eBay for over $150,000. In November 2019, it was announced that Netflix was working on a live-action adaptation of the Legend of Zelda series as a TV show. Conflicting rumors say that it's an animated TV show with the goal of running three seasons. Over the course of the proposed show, season one would be an adaptation of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. The second season will be focused on Link's past, Link's awakening, and A Link Between Worlds. And finally, the third season would cover Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks. There's currently been no announcement about how COVID-19 will affect the proposed Zelda show. It's anyone guess which one of these plans will actually come to fruition. However, with the success of Dark Crystal, a prestige, big-budget series, be it animated or live-action, would seem like a very good fit for Netflix. And that's that. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more Total Nerd videos.